Well then, do you fancy getting down and dirty with your wife in a little box in front of a live TV audience, as well as broadcasting it to the nation? Well, we'll talk about that in a second, but yes, it defies belief that these free TV shows ever got commissioned and made it onto our screens. You know them shows where your mum goes, bloody hell, remember that programme? God, they'd never allow that on TV these days. And let me tell you, she's double right, especially in the case of number three on our list, bloody hell. But first, let's talk about sex box. Now, we love a bit of TV and reality TV is our guilty pleasure, but it hit an all-time low with this absolute beauty that aired in 2013. So the premise was that couples who are in need of a little counselling, a little bit of relationship guidance, go into the studio, say hello to the presenter, go into the box and smash the fucking life out of each other. Yes, they do the old wheelbarrow, lovely, maybe a cheeky donkey punch, bosh. And then they come out to talk about it to a panel of experts. Oh, and not forgetting the rest of the fucking world. Now, the idea behind all this is that people are most honest after sex. So once they've spilt their beans in the box, they can spill the rest of their beans to the experts and get that much needed advice they desperately crave to make their relationship work. Now my favourite part of this program is the intro. Three couples in crisis with nowhere else to turn. Well, I don't know about you, but I reckon I could have found at least one other place to fucking turn, do you know what I mean? Maybe try swinging or something, dogging, I don't know anything but this, fucking hell. All I'm saying is there's probably better options than having a quickie in a box and then discussing your wife's minge in front of the nation. But there we are. Anyway, unbelievably, it aired for two seasons in the UK and it also made it to America, but then people woke up and realised how shit it is and then it got cancelled. Anyway, number two. Well, it's not a crude affair like the old Dirty Box programme, but you bet your life it wouldn't be commissioned today because our sense of humour has taken a great big dump. And this was one of the biggest pranks in history. Yes, Space Cadets. Airing in 2005, three lucky contestants who applied to an advert in the paper were told they had won a trip to space. They were buzzing. They endured all the training. They said goodbye to their loved ones, buckled up their seatbelt in the rocket and launched off into outer space. Absolutely incredible. But it turned out they didn't actually leave the fucking TV studio. In Ipswich, of all places. Shit hell. Anyway, now this wasn't just the biggest prank ever on TV it was also the most expensive and rumoured to have cost around 5 million quid due to the set design, the six month audition process and the use of multiple actors. Now let me shorten this for you. First they sent nine contestants to a military base in Russia little did they know the plane just circled a few times and ended up back in fucking Ipswich they trained them up to be astronauts selected the best three and accompanied by an actor and two acting pilots went off to what they thought was space. After five days Johnny Vaughan revealed to them that they'd actually gone absolutely nowhere and in fairness to them, they found it quite funny. Mind you, they each got 25 grand for their travel, so yeah, 25 grand for being made to look a bit of a tit is uh, not too bad. The show was created on the back of the success of reality TV's most famous experiment, Big Brother, and it certainly brought in the ratings with over 2 million watching each of the 10 shows. Mind you, what probably would have been a better show is if they actually got all the Big Brother contestants over the years and sent them to space and fucking left them there. No, I'm joking. Anyway, now for the creme de la creme of controversial TV that most certainly would wouldn't make the cut today. It's the unforgettable. There's something about Miriam. Airing in 2004, the show's premise was pretty simple and quite conventional, really, as reality TV shows go. So six men would compete in physical challenges in order to win dates with the lovely Miriam. She would then choose the person who left the best impression on her, romantically and even sexually. And he would walk away with 10 grand plus a romantic holiday for the two of them. Yeah, see? Nothing too out of the ordinary, I suppose. It sounds a bit Love Islandy, doesn't it? But there was a twist, because the lovely Miriam was born with a great big concerning secret for the winner, Tom. She was a man. I'm not a woman. Oh. I was born as a man. Oh. Yeah, so old Thomas weren't too happy about all this. And unfortunately for him, if this show had been combined with Sex Box, he probably would have found out a lot fucking sooner. But even so, after the big reveal, the contestants were so upset they actually sued the production company for a host of tricky things. Although, to be honest, they found it quite funny at the time. But anyway, they demanded it never be aired on TV. However, then they settled out of court for a wad of cash and said, ah, oh, fuck it, tune in, people. And you bet your bum hole they certainly did, raking in nearly a million viewers on the final episode, but of course, receiving multiple complaints through its bad reception. Now, sadly, Miriam passed away in 2019, but she did make her mark on the world, so rest in peace to this legend of television. Yes, so there we have it, the best of unairable TV shows in today's world. Yes, all right, then I'll see you double soon, a bosh. Osh, osh, echo, yes.